What's good, YouTube? My name is Kosher Nostra. Back at you guys one more time with another sneaker review, unboxing, and on feet, fam. Let's hop right into another one. Guys, things have slowed down here a little bit lately on the channel, man. I just had so much stuff going on, two jobs, life keeps getting in the way left and right. Here, most recently, my HVAC system completely died on me, so I had no heat, literally, like, on the coldest week of the year. Scratch that, the coldest week of the winter so far. Yeah, worst time for that to possibly happen, man. So I had to make some moves, had to figure that situation out. Luckily, I got that all taken care of, man. Got heat back in this house, finally. It was a cold couple days for sure, fam. So I apologize, I had to sort of prioritize with things, and the YouTube channel has definitely suffered, man. Now that I've got all that in order, I'm hoping to keep this ball rolling consistently. Hopefully nothing else too major like that pops off. Guys, let's check out these sneakers. Fam, another Kyrie 5 for you guys. This time, something a little different. In a size 11, guys, Nike Air Zoom Vapor X Kyrie 5. The colorway is white slash black, white, and hot lava. One interesting thing I will say about this pair is on the side of the box it says suggested retail is 180. I definitely paid 160 for these, which is actually a lot for a Kyrie. Definitely the most for any Kyrie to date that I can think of. There is the sneaker itself, fam, the Nike Air Zoom Vapor X Kyrie 5. When I first saw pictures of these, it was intriguing just because you could definitely tell there were some different things going on with this sneaker. At the same time, the colorway itself is not too loud, not too terribly significant. And because of that fact, the excitement for me kind of dulled down a little bit just because I've got so many sneakers, a lot of times, especially with the Kyrie model, I really like it when they go with these vibrant, loud, crazy colorways, especially when you look at all the different PEs that he's been rocking on court that have been insane, man. I wish they would drop a ton of those. Kyrie's been killing it as always with the PEs and then they throw something like this at you where you basically have a white sneaker with black and hot lava accents. It sort of leaves a little bit at least for me personally to be desired however a sneaker like this it's easy to pair with outfits and stuff like that because the colorways are somewhat simple not too loud I mean all really you got to do is throw something white or black on and something that just doesn't clash too terribly with that hot lava color and you can rock these things with just about any outfit so in that sense pretty dope. Getting this sneaker on versus the actual Kyrie 5 itself, I will say this sneaker is definitely easier to get on. There's a little bit more of a low cut to the actual back ankle portion of the sneaker, so it does actually make the sneaker a little bit easier to slide on. You can definitely tell there's some different lines going on to the sneaker, especially on that back heel portion of the sneaker, where it's a lot more fluid. It seems to be just almost like one angled curve to that back heel portion, whereas in with that actual Kyrie 5, there's a lot more angles and stuff going on, a lot more triangular aspects to that back heel portion of the sneaker, so that definitely stands out. The actual tongue logo on these is fairly unique, and while it really didn't do any anything for me at first. Eventually I sort of realized that it was that Kyrie logo on top of a little tennis court, which I thought was a really dope little touch. Nike always does dope little things like that. Sometimes you have to put a little thought into it to sort of decipher what they're really going with, what the meaning is behind the symbol and stuff like that. But once I figured that out, it definitely got a little chuckle out of me. I'm definitely digging that little logo. Definitely unique. Being a collab with a Kyrie 5 sneaker, you knew they were going to hit you with that Venus flytrap inspired shroud on the actual upper of the sneaker. And again, Again, they definitely did that on these however this shoe is somewhat easy to get on just because that back heel portion as I stated before is not quite as high as the traditional Kyrie 5 the actual Nike swoosh on that lateral portion is black and when you get up close to it you can sort of see the dots ingrained into the swoosh definitely dope there's a little bit of a sheen to that swoosh as well as you're working your way down to the midsole portion of the shoe one of the most unique features of this particular version of this Kyrie 5 you've got this sort of plastic caging which is clear clear on this lower portion. I assume that's where you're getting a lot more of the influence from that actual Vapor model. I personally dig it. It catches the eye, you know what I mean? It's, it's different for a Kyrie and definitely for a Kyrie 5, so it's very unique. As you follow it around to the back of the shoe, it sort of ends right around the heel portion of the shoe as it sort of swings around to that medial portion. And when you look around to the actual medial portion itself, you have sort of a similar caging, but it's in this sort of plastic, sort of rubber textured material. So I think honestly, it'll be a little bit more forgiving, you know, when you're rubbing up on things, like if you're actually using these things on court, playing tennis or something like that, as these shoes were actually designed, you know, you might get some scuff marks and stuff like that on that per particular part of the shoe, but it actually might clean off a little bit easier than actually getting it on that mesh upper of the shoe, which I think is pretty dope. If you follow the lacing system on this sneaker, one thing that is definitely unique is 
when you get to the top lace hole, there's actually two lace holes. So you got a little bit of variety in what you can do and how you lace the shoe, depending on how you want to loose lace it or lace it tight, what kind of gives you more support and more structure and whatever kind of makes more sense at how it sort of tugs at your ankle. They decided to highlight both of those lace holes with a black material, which I'm not the hugest fan of. Definitely sort of stands out if you decide to lace it on that inner lace and not that outer lace. It'll definitely stand out if you don't tie the shoe. And of course, when you work your way back to the back heel portion of the sneaker, you have that all-seeing eye that we've seen on these Kyrie models. And of course, that has been very prominent on the Kyrie 5 back there. That's where that hot lava color is going to be most prominent. And then again, we're going to see it on the actual outsole of the sneaker, which on this version of the Kyrie 5 is completely different. That's the other thing about this shoe that is completely different with this shoe. I assume that's where you see a lot of that vapor model coming into play. And on the actual left shoe, there's actually a sticker which says non-marking outsole, which I assume kind of means if you're playing with these things on some sort of a court, like a, a tennis court, basketball court, something like that, running around, and doing all those skid stops and stuff like that on that court, you're not going to tear that court up and leave a whole bunch of crazy skids, um, which I think is pretty cool. There is a little bit of a clear portion on that outsole, and again, you can see through it and you see that little Kyrie Irving logo. On the left sneaker, when you look down there, you'll see that Nike tennis court with the swoosh in the middle. And last but not least, they chose to hit you with these mismatch insoles that have a printed on material to them. I would assume the left shoe is supposed to represent a tennis ball or something like that. There's a pattern to the insole, which is in white and hot lava, sort of in a dot pattern with a black background to really distinguish what's going on there. As you look at the right insole on the sneaker, they have the basketball represented. Probably the dopest feature of this sneaker. I always love when they hit you with mismatched printed branded insoles. To me, it's just a nod to collectors out there because when you're rocking them, people aren't going to see those things. All in all, a pretty dope shoe. I definitely like the fit of these things. As you guys know, if you've ever tried a Kyrie on, these things definitely run narrow. So if you've got a wide foot, definitely size up. See if you can't try a pair of these things on or maybe just a traditional Kyrie 5 to give you some sort of an idea as to the fit of the shoe. Might have to size up a little bit more than that or the Kyrie model itself just might not be for you unfortunately. For all you people with narrow feet, these things will definitely fit good. I definitely suggest sizing up a half size and seeing if that works for you. All in all, a very dope shoe, guys. Let's check these things out on feet. Let me know what you think of these Kyrie 5s. Is this something you guys picked up a little too plain for you? Were you not feeling that price increase on this particular version of the Kyrie? I know I definitely wasn't, man. Keep that Kyrie price tag low. That's definitely the dopest thing about the Kyrie line. Guys, my name is Kosher Nostra. Thanks for rocking with my review. Smash that thumbs up or down button, guys. Sub to the channel if you haven't yet. Throw me a comment down below and I will respond, fam. Stay blessed, guys. Peace. I'm a beat.